Hello everyone, today we are going to solve a problem for kinetics of a rigid body using work and energy. The double pulley consists of two parts that are attached to one another. So when it says they are attached to one another, it means that they have the same angular velocity. It has a weight of 50 pounds, so the weight is given, not the mass. You need to pay attention and change the weight into mass by dividing by g, by dividing by 32.17. And a radius of gyration of 0.6. So when we have radius of gyration of the whole system, then we have the moment of inertia. We talked about for different geometries, instead of memorizing different equations, usually the problem is giving us the radius of gyration. And it's turning with angular velocity of 20 radian per second. So we have initial angular velocity. If you write our uh, known values, we have omega 1, to be 20 radian per second. Determine the angular velocity of the pulley. We want to find the final angular velocity. At the instant, the 20 pound weight moves two feet downward. So when this one is moving uh, two feet downward. So when we have the initial angular velocity, we want to find the final angular velocity. And also we want it at an instance that the weight has moved two feet uh, we don't have any component of time, so work and energy would be a great method to solve the problem. If there was a component of time, if the angular velocity after a certain time was needed, we could use uh, impulse momentum equations. Uh, but here is a classical problem of work and energy. So the principle of work and energy is saying that the initial kinetic energy for the whole system, the work that we do on the system would be equal to the kinetic energy of the final kinetic energy. And uh, you need to pay attention that these values are for the whole system because we have the angular velocity both at initial and final stage, so none of these kinetic energy would be zero. Well, let's look at the problem to see what component of kinetic energy we have. Mass A, because it has a velocity, will have a kinetic energy. Mass B will have a kinetic energy. And also our pulley system will have a kinetic energy as well because it's rotating. We have similar problems in kinetic of a particle system and then we used to neglect the mass of the pulley. Therefore, we didn't need to include kinetic energy of the pulley system. But here, our pulley has a mass, so therefore it has a kinetic energy as well. So my kinetic energy equation is the same for T1 and T2, the only difference is the value of omega. So I have Ta, the kinetic energy of mass A, the kinetic energy of mass B, and the kinetic energy of the pulley system. So mass A would be simply half ma va squared plus half mb vb squared, and pulley would be i of the pulley omega squared. We know we can find the mass moment of inertia for the pulley because we have the radius of gyration. So that would be the mass of the pulley, the radius of gyration about 0 0.0 squared. And also the velocities at A and B. If we look at the problem, we can find a velocity of A would be the same as the velocity of the rope at this instant. If I call this radius RA, the velocity at A would be simply Ra omega squared. If I call this radius the smaller one, Rb, velocity at B would be Rb omega. Sorry, not omega squared, omega. Omega squared will give us the acceleration. So uh, the magnitude of the two are different. One of them is going down, the other one is going up. But I'm writing energy. If you remember, energy is a scalar quantity. So the direction doesn't matter. At the end, these velocities are going to be a square. So that's why I write them Ra and Rb. So if I expand it and I factor omega square for each, I have half Ma Ra squared. So Va would be R omega. So that would be R. Uh, Ra squared omega squared, and I factored omega squared. 
So here the same thing for MB, RB, and same thing for here MP, K naught squared, all of them omega squared. I could factor half, probably would have been better. So MA, the mass A would be 20 pounds, the weight divided by 32.70, and RA would be one. Mass B would be 30 divided by 13.17.5 would be the radius. And for the disc is 50 pound. So I divided by 32.17 to get slot. And radius of gyration is given to me for 0.6 squared. So we have everything except omega for the initial instant we have omega as well for the final uh, stage we don't have uh, omega for for t1 i'm going to write it as 0 0.0 point seven one omega squared so that's the value that i get from uh, the whole thing and i have omega so t1 would be 0.71 one is squared. T2, all the mass and the radii are the same. It's just the omega would be different that I don't have it, but I have found the general equation for it. So I, I know the kinetic energy. I know the equation for the kinetic energy of instant two, and I know the kinetic energy value for instant one. The next thing that I need to find is the work that is done on the system. So the only work that is done on the system is the work of the weight here. I have a weight here and here. These two forces are creating a work because they have displacement. So I have, if I open up here, have work of my mass A, which is MA, G, displacement of A, because it's going down and the weight is acting down, so it's positive. And then I have the work done on mass B is MB, G, the displacement of B. So I have the displacement of A, is two feet, but I don't have the displacement of B. So if this one is going downward two feet, how far mass B is going upward? So I need to find that. And I can find that by knowing that the angle, there is a relation between the displacement and the angle. Let me erase. If I can erase. So I know if there would be a theta here, dA is simply RA theta and dB is RB theta. The angle of rotation would be the same. So here, if we have rotation, it would be theta. So when theta is the same, I can find a relation between the displacement of mass A and mass B. So I can write dA over RA is the same as dB over RB. I got this by looking at these two equations. So the only unknown is dB, so I can find db here it should be rb over ra times da so rb rb over ra da if 
I look at my problem, RA is 1, RB is 0.5. So this one would be half. Also, displacement of A would be 2. So the displacement of B would be 1 uh, for me. And it's going upward. So I have the displacement of A and B. So I come here, I write UA, which was M A G B A is positive because the force and displacement are in the same direction. So mass A was uh, 20, 32.17 to get the mass. But G is also 32.17. I write it in this way so you know uh, what's happening. And uh, it would be 2, so that would be 40 foot pounds. And B would be MBG dB. But because the two are in opposite direction, that means that the angle between the two is 180. So cosine of 180 would be negative 1 here. So the weight would be 30, and the movement is 1, so I have negative 30 foot pound. If I put everything together, C1 plus U12 equals T2. T1 was 0.71. Omega squared, the initial omega is 20. Here, for the work done, I have a positive work of mass A, negative work of mass B, and at the end, again, 0.71 omega 2 squared. The only unknown is omega 2, so I find omega 2 to be 20.3 radian per second. So I found the final angular velocity using work and energy. To remember that we are using the work energy for the whole system, so we don't need to deal with the internal forces in, in the ropes and so forth. So we had three components of kinetic energy for the initial phase and the final phase, and the work that is done on the sun. We have one positive component of work and one negative component of work. We could find a final angular velocity of the system.